G'day everybody, Nick Dingler here again for the third part of our database series. In this particular video, we're going to look at viewing student marks, so individual students' marks, adding student marks, and then deleting students finally for this video. Now we're not done, there's still two more parts of this database video. The next one will be pretty short, and the last one might be a bit of a kicker. But anyway, if you missed out on the last video and you don't want to go backwards, I've included the source code that you see in front of you down in the description of the video. So grab it, check it out, and we can continue with it. First things first, let's set up the three subroutines that we're going to need today. So right here, I'm going to go sub view student marks. Okay, under that, I'm going to go sub add student marks, or add student mark, I should say. It's only singular. And then finally, delete student. All right, we'll talk about what each one of these are going to do in a meanwhile, but we've got to go back to the very beginning of our program and modify our menu to include these three options. So let's scroll up to menu. Okay, and let's add these three options here. I'm going to be a bit of a cheater. And I'm going to copy and paste this menu item. So control C, control V, where I am. Control V, control V. All right, so C, D, and E are our new options. C, it's going to be view students' marks. D is going to be add a student mark. And then E, as you probably could have guessed, is delete student. Okay, before we go too far, let's add them to the if statement we've got going here, otherwise it's not going to be very helpful. C, D, E. C and D and E. I hope I'm not going too quickly for you. I'm sorry if I am. So C is view, whoop, view student marks. D is add student mark, and then finally, delete student. All right, pause the video if you need to copy that stuff out, because that's all we're going to do to the menu. We're going to jump straight into the view student marks, because that is going to be the biggest one we do today. So let's jump down there. Let's add a few spaces, and let's get cracking. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to provide them with a list of students to look at. They're going to pick their students by their ID number, and based on that number, we're going to query the database for all the marks that student has. Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can do this the easy way with the database or the hard way with the database. And we're actually going to do it the hard way because it's the most powerful and it's probably the quickest code-wise. So the easy way would be that we ask for the ID number and then we ask for every student ID number that exists in the marks table. And we also have to go and query the database again for the student's details, so their first name and their last name, again, unfortunately. The second way we can do it is we can perform what's called an inner join. Now, if you watched the first video, I performed a query in the database, and we did exactly that. We performed an inner join on the student table and the marks table to merge the data together and return a big chunk of data that we can just use in one hit. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do the join because we've already done selects, okay, and it would just be a couple of those ones, or we can just be a bit more powerful and perform a merge between the data. All right, I've talked too much, so let's get coding. First of all, let's show a list of the students. And this is why we did not put a read line in the view students function, because now we can utilize it in any function that we want to see all the students come up. And then we're going to get the ID from the user. So let's ask them nicely, enter the ID of the student to select, like so. Let's dim an ID as an integer and equal a read line. So we get it from them. And then finally, a tiny bit of error checking. If the ID is greater than zero, whoop, that's a less than. All right. Because no ID can be zero or less, that's why I'm doing this if statement. Now, realistically, I should do a second part of the if statement. I should check if the ID is greater than zero and it's less than our largest ID and etc. or I should query the database to check that the ID exists. All right, there's lots of that going on. But because this is a quick and nasty program, just to show you how databases work, I'm just going to get into building the query string. Okay, this is going to be the biggest, ugliest, nastiest query string you've ever seen. So I'm actually going to put in a comment first what it's going to look like. So it's plain select because we're asking for data. And before we did asterisks, now I'm not going to do an asterisk this time because I want specific fields from multiple tables. So what you do there is you type in the name of the table, so students, dot, and then the field name, so first name to start with. You put a comma and then you put the next field that you want. So students.lastName. 
I also want the mark's assessment name. Now, I'm a bit of an idiot. Because there is a space in this column name, it's actually going to screw up our SQL statement. What you do to fix that is you have to put these bad boys around it, okay? These backwards apostrophes. So if you don't know where you find that, it's next to your one key on your keyboard on the left, all right? And then I finally want the mark from the student. So where's all this information coming from? Well, it's coming from two tables. What you have to think of, though, is what is the primary table this information is coming from? In this case, it's the student's table because we're, we're selecting a student ID and most of it's coming from the student table. So you go select the columns. Now I'm being a bit silly here. I was actually going to show you the format, not the actual thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go select, I'm just going to put the format. Select columns from table one and then we do what's called an inner join on the table two um, on field one equals field two. I'll explain that in a second where uh, field equals ID. All right. Wow. That's going to be our format for the moment. So we're selecting the columns. These are the columns here that we want from the table. So I'm going to go to the next line. Let's start making this. I'm being really silly today. I'm just going to bloody put this in a string for the moment. I'm sorry, people. Stuffing you around. Okay, select the columns from the table. So from students, in a join there, marks, this is table two, on, now what are the fields that we're going to join them on, well it's students ID, and what's the related field in marks, it's marks.student underscore ID, so that's what this part means here, is what two fields are related, and how are we going to join this information together, now right now, if we perform this query, it'll work, but unfortunately, what it's going to do is it's going to give us every single student and every single student's mark, which we don't want. We want to filter it by whatever student they selected. So we're going to put the where, and the field is the student's ID equals, and then whatever ID they typed in. So I'm going to put an and ID on the end. All right, that's a chunky-ass query. But what that's going to do is return to us the student they've selected, the students' names, and the marks, all in each record, which is fantastic. So the first assessment mark will have Bobby Bob on the left of it. The second assessment mark will have Bobby Bob, and the exam mark will have Bobby Bob, if that's who we selected. And that's pretty much it. So let's execute this query, and because we are asking for data, we're going to need a reader. So execute and read. So dim a command as a new OLE command with Q and connection, no, not concurrent, connection, and then dimmer reader as an OLEDB reader, equals command, execute reader, and we're good to go. Now, before when we did this, we did um, a plain while reader.read, .read, and then we just splatted the information out on the page. I'm actually going to read the first record of our query, output that to the screen, and then I'm going to output the rest of them afterwards. And the reason is, is because I want to print the student's name first time, but I'm not going to print it for every other time, uh, if that makes sense. Right now, what I want you to do is pause the video if you're not caught up, but let's do this first column. So let's get the first record only. I'm being a bad boy, I'm assuming we have records. All right? But because, again, cheap and nasty, we're going to do it. Okay, so we're going to write the heading first. Let's put a gap, because that's always nice. And let's say marks for the student, and let's put their name after that. So reader, first, whoop, capital, first name. And a space, and reader, a last name. And that's pretty much it. That's going to be our marks for student, Bobby Bob. Okay. And then let's write their first mark to the screen. Because we've got a mark in our record, we're going to write it to the screen first. And then we'll write the rest in our while loop. All right, I'm going to bring back this formatting technique, guys. I'm going to go for the first field. I want five spaces. For the second field, I want 20 spaces, because that's going to be the assessment name. And then for the third field, I want four spaces, because that's going to be the mark number. This bad boy here is just going to be a set of spaces. So how do we do that? Let's go nothing, then the reader assessment name, if I can spell, and then the reader mark. 
All right, now we have to go through and collect all the different marks that they've got and output them to the screen. So let's read the next record, which will be our while reader dot read. And then we're just going to steal this line of code, this right line here, because it's going to be the exact same formatting. So copy him, paste him here, and guess what? We are good to go. That is actually it for the marks, which is fantastic. So let's put, let's close our reader and put in a read line. So reader dot close and console read line and that is it for our view student marks always test so let's press play give the guy a go hopefully it's going to work in our menu so see view the student marks i'm going to go for bobby because he's got three marks and there they are all right this is why i put the formatting in we've got five spaces 20 spaces for the name of the assessment and then four spaces for their mark all right so let's go back and exit that's it that was the hardest function that we're going to do in this video because the next two a little bit tedious, but they're quite easy. They're, we've already pretty much done that before. So let's go to add student mark and let's get cracking with this bad boy. So again, we're going to list, so show the students. And you know what? We're pretty much going to do the same thing that view student mark did to begin with. We're going to view the students. We're going to get the ID and check if the ID is okay. So I'm going to scroll up a bit here, people. I want you to highlight from if statement all the way up to there. Copy that. Come back down and paste him to start with in your add student. Press enter and we're good to go. All right, once we've got the student ID, let's give him a couple of variables because we're asking for a brand new assessment name. So these are the details that we're going to need. We need the assessment name and we need the actual mark that they received. And then we put that into the database. So first of all, let's, okay, let's make some storage space for our stuff. So dim a name as a string, dim a mark as an integer, and let's get cracking. So right line, just a blank one because I like spaces. Right line, enter the new mark details. And let's ask, whoop, ask for the details. Console dot write assessment name. All right, and then go name equals console read line. So we've got the name, console dot write mark. All right, and then mark equals good old read line. How complicated is that? So we've got the details at this point. Now, we actually have three details that we need for this particular, I suppose, piece of data. Because the marks table has four columns. It has an ID, a student ID, assessment name, and a mark. What we need to do is actually specify an ID, so a student ID, I should say, assessment name and the mark. So we have three details, but we already have those three details in our program. So let's build the query. Oh my God, dim Q as a string. All right, same as the adding a student, insert into marks this time, and then the columns. So the order is going to be student ID, backwards apostrophe because there's a space in it, assessment. Bain, yeah, right. Mark, and then the values for our assessment. Oh, sorry, our mark. So the values are, and let's just type in string at the moment. Now, last time I put apostrophes around all the fields. We don't need apostrophes around all of the fields, only strings. So ID won't need it. Name will need apostrophes, just regular ones. And then mark won't, because it's another number. And let's replace them with their variable counterparts. So, quote mark, quote mark. Get back up there. Ampersand, ampersand, ID in the middle. Same thing for name. Quote mark, quote mark. Ampersand, ampersand. Oops, there's a space there. Um, assessment, I just put it as name. Quote, quote. Ampersand, ampersand, mark. All right. That's going to build the query string for us. Let's execute it. Now, we're not expecting anything to return to us, so we do not need a reader. Execute query. Let's dim the command as a new OLEDB. Command Q and connection. And then just plain command execute non-query. All right. And then we're done. We don't have to close anything. We don't have to finish anything. That realistically should just plain work. So. Test your bad boy out, pause the video if you need to keep typing this up, but I'm going to click start right now, and we're going to test him out. Now, let's view student marks first, and have a look at Stephen Pills. He has no data exists, okay? That was me being a bad boy and doing a read, and assuming there was data. Whoops. 
So let's add a student mark to Mr. Pills. So his assessment one, he got 100. Fantastic. Let's add a second mark for Stephen. Assessment two, oh no, the mark thing's coming up down the bottom. He got 50. Let's view student marks and look at Stephen. There it is. 100% working when you're not a fool. All right, get rid of the right line because I hate it. And that's it done. That's the add student mark. It's pretty straightforward, that one. Last one is a delete a student. Okay? We're going to do, again, the same thing that we did before. We're going to list the students. We're going to ask for an ID, and then we're going to delete it. Now, when we're deleting a student, we actually have two tables to worry about. Because a student can have marks, we need to be able to delete their marks and their data from the students as well, if that makes sense. So the first thing that we're going to do in this function after we ask for the ID, we're going to delete all the marks the student has. And it doesn't matter if they don't have any marks. It won't cause an error. And then we're going to delete the student from their table. So let's copy these if from the if statement up to the view students, jam this bad boy in here, and let's get cracking. So as I said, let's first delete their marks. So at this point, we've viewed the students, we've asked for an ID, and we've got the ID. Now let's delete their marks. This one's quite easy. Let's dim Q as a string. It equals, and the command for this is delete from, and then the table. So marks, and then the condition. So if you just go delete from marks, you're going to lose a lot of stuff. You're going to lose every single mark you've got. So we need to narrow down with a where statement. So we need to say where the student ID equals what they typed in. And that's stored inside ID, so let's go and ID. So if I select number one, it's going to go delete from marks where student ID equals one, which is Bobby Bob's marks, and it's going to delete all of them. So let's create the command to do it for us. Q and connection. Okay, I'm sure you're all sick of seeing that. And then execute a non-query because we're not expecting anything to come back. And then second, delete the student himself. Okay. So I've already dimmed Q, so I'm just going to go Q equals this. Q equals, so delete from students where ID this time, not student ID, and then just command equals a new OLE command, and then you've got a Q in connection, command execute a non-query. Done. Now be careful with this because it's not going to say, are you sure you want to delete? It's just going to delete them as soon as you type that number in. Okay, that's kind of stuff that you'd probably have to add in yourself because I'm a bit lazy. So let's view student marks. I'm going to get rid of Stephen Pills. Okay, he's going to lose all his stuff. Delete student. Let's do number three for Stephen. Let's jump back here. Let's view students. He's gone. 100% gone. All right, that's it for this video today, everybody. That's adding marks, viewing marks, deleting students and their marks. And so I'm actually going to leave something with you. I'm going to have a challenge for you to be able to delete just a single mark from one student. So not deleting every student and every mark. I want you to have another menu option, which is going to delete just one mark from a student. That's your challenge. Give it a go, everybody. In the next video, we're going to be doing uh, modifying their data and a little bit more. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Put any comments down at the bottom or suggestions or fixes or like and subscribe. I'd love for you to do that. See you later, everybody. This is Nick Dingle. Catch you in the next video.